Hey everyone, it's Will from Wheelbright Design and welcome back to another video tutorial. As always, these video tutorials are free and this one will be based on around creating an animated carousel using smart interactions within Figma. So we're going to be using um, everything inside Figma. We're not going to be using any external plugins. However, you could do. For example, I've been getting these images from uh, the Unsplash plugin, which we can see down here. And this text I just pulled from just a random website on Google Chrome. Everything else is just based on default Figma. So let's have a look at what we're gonna be creating today. So we've got this prototype here, and this is this screen here. So this is the entire prototype in this single frame here. And if we have a look, we can swipe between and we can see our uh, pagination updates along the bottom. And we can also see that it goes from a light mode to a dark mode too, based on the image behind. So that's not something smart, we're not coding that, we're just saying on this frame we're going to be using a dark mode um, because I don't think we can uh, detect the pixels, uh, the colors behind to be able to automatically update that, but you could do if you were to actually build this in iOS or perhaps on Android. <clears throat> so let's get started and learn how to build this. So we're going to be building it using components and then we're going to be adding some interactions. So if I press Shift E, we can see we've got these interactions between these different frames here. And in fact, I'm actually going to stack this vertically and you'll see why later. So if I just add a quick auto layout to this, stack it vertically, and then I'm going to remove that auto layout just because we don't actually need it. And we're going to have a look at how these are actually built. <coughs> Excuse me. So at the top here, we've got our different dots. So these are the dots that are sit inside our pagination. And these are very easy to build. So these are just an oval at 12 pixels by 12 pixels. The light versions are white. You can choose whatever colors you like. And the active state is a fill. And the uh, default state, so not the active state, is a stroke. Um, and we can see that by actually selecting the dot here. And we can see it's a stroke of one pixel inside. So I've chosen white for my um, light mode. So for dark mode, I've gone for this uh, green. And again, we can see the active is a fill and the, uh, not that one, sorry. The default is a stroke. We've then used these dots to create our pagination. So if we look in our pagination, we can see we have a frame and that frame has an auto layout. So we have eight pixels of padding top and bottom. We are aligning it to the top left, although it's not really that relevant, the alignment in this case. And we are doing the uh, direction from left to right. So it's horizontal direction and we're having eight pixels between. <clears throat> Inside our frame, so let's click on this light one here. Inside we can see we've got the four dots from above. So these are uh, already components. So let me let me just show you how quickly how to create one of those. So, so then we've got a dot, let's call that dot forward slash active. And then we're gonna create our second one. And we're gonna add a stroke this time and remove the fill. So, and then we're gonna make these the same color in a minute. Um, and then we're going to create a component set. So on the set, because we added that um, forward slash, we can see that we, it was a dot and then forward slash what it was. Uh, I didn't actually rename this one. So this one is going to be default. There we go. So we've, we've got our active and default. So if we then bring one of these out, whoops, create a copy. So I'm holding that alt, create a copy. And we can see we can now switch between because they are a component. So that's how these dots are built. We can then drag one of those dots in, duplicate it, and then select which one we want. And we've created the light mode here and the dark mode here. To create the background, which if we have a look down here, we can see what it looks like. That's quite easy. It is, you just grab the frame, select a fill color. So I've used the same green, or in this case, I've used white. I've set it to 10%. 
and then I've added this background blur and the exact background blur here is a blur of four. So when you overlay that on top, it actually blurs the image behind, but also has that color over the top as well. <clears throat> so again, these were created with um, a name. So in this case, it was pagination. And then I did a forward slash light and then I did a forward slash and a number. So the number corresponds to which uh, dot is currently active. So this is light one, light two, light three, light four, dark one, dark two, dark three, dark four. And then when you create that component, it then will create it like so. So just to give you a real quick uh, overview of how I made that, we can drag one of these dots in Add an auto layout, so I'm pressing Shift A here. So I've added an auto layout. I'm going to set eight apart and then add eight pixels of padding top and bottom. And then I'm going to press Command D to duplicate it four times or three times, sorry. And then I'm going to select this one, set it to default, this one to default, this one to default. And this is going to be our pagination light one. Then to create the other versions, because we've used a, a numerical, um, it will automatically update to the next one, which is quite handy. And then we just need to go through and make sure these are changed, like so. And again, last one. And I'm only gonna do the light mode in this example, because it will be pretty obvious how to do the dark mode. And then you select all of these, you can see all the names here. And then as soon as we create that component set, we can see that it actually changes. Um, so the top level is called pagination. So the component set is called pagination. And then those kind of parameters we uh, gave it before, such as light, dark, and then a number will be the version. So then if we bring one of these out, we can then, because we've only got light at the moment, you can only select that and then we can choose which one we want here. So that's how we create our pagination. So I'll just delete that. Next one is onto the carousel and this is a little bit more complicated. Um, so if I select this uh, version one or the component one inside the carousel um, component group, component set, and I expand it, we've got a pagination on top. So our number one is a frame. We've no auto layout, we don't have any auto layout, we don't need it. I've then added the pagination and behind it, I've added something called frames. <clears throat> and these frames are made up of a frame with an image on top. And we have four of them and they are in an auto layout. So they're inside a frame with an auto layout and there's zero padding and zero space between. So if I go to the top level and remove clip content, we can see that's what it actually looks like. And if I do the same with the one below, remove clip content, we can see I've moved over one. And same for this one and for this one. So we can see it's the same component pagination is being updated to which frame it is and then we are moving it over based on how wide the image is. So on the first example we can see the width is 428 so we can see we are at x0 on the frames if we go down to the number two click frames we can see it's minus 428 now that's the width of the frame. For the third one if we click the frames we can see it's minus 856 so that's minus 4 to 8 minus 4 to 8 and then add sorry then add uh, then minus another 4 to 8 for the last one and we get minus 1284 so make sure each one of these frames uh, at the top level has clip content so it's actually hiding the rest and that's how we create that so I'll show you really quickly and then we'll build one out ourselves just so you get uh, the full explanation. So for the animation to work, press Shift E to go into the prototype mode. And you can see we are creating a interaction from 
this one to this one and then this one back to that one and to the next one and we can see that interaction is a on drag so that's when the mouse is down and you move it and we've got an ease out over 100 milliseconds <clears throat> so that is when you let go of the drag it will take 100 milliseconds to complete um i think now where people tend to go wrong with the on drag interaction is they'll put it on the top layer and that just won't work here so if we did that we would just end up clicking between the two and the animation wouldn't be this nice drag one here it would be like clicking and it would just move to the next frame which is not what we want instead we add this to the actual frame itself so uh, sorry not to the frame itself the media which is a frame but it's called frames so that's a little confusing so under our first um, carousel item if we go under frames and we go to the media that's actually visible in this case it's this top one here this is where we add the drag animation so we don't add it anywhere above it we add it to the actual part that's visible so you're dragging this the actual item inside the auto layout okay so let's quickly build that so um, know what we're talking about here and we're going to use these components up here so I'm going to have a look at my uh, frame here so my frame is 428 wide 926 in height but I want uh, should we just for this example do a square even though this one isn't we're going to do a square in this example so we want a rectangle of 428 by 428 like so whoops and we've got this uh, locked here so it keeps the aspect ratio so we've got our square uh, we want to put that inside a frame and we want to make that frame an auto layout so we can press shift a to do that so here we've got our auto layout frame we do want it horizontal but we want all of these to be set to zero like so and then we're going to call this media item so then we're going to duplicate that three times so we've got four of them like so and then we're going to put all of that inside another frame and we'll go frame that selection and call that carousel and we want this top level frame to have clip content on it and we want the width to be 428 so now we can only see the first one but I'm going to leave that uh, as clip content for now while I put one of these on it so I'm just going to hold down alt and drag this out into my frame here just make sure it's under the top level and I'm going to center it put it at the bottom and then I'm going to put it 16 from the bottom like so and if you want to see these uh, helpful rulers you can just press alt on your keyboard to see those okay so now we've got our pagination in there we've got our frame let's just rename that to frame and we've got our media items so I'm just going to grab our carousel and do unclip it now even though I said I wouldn't be using any plugins you don't have to you can just uh, add an image here so you can go to fill uh, on the media item click here fill add an image and then upload your image here but to save time I'm going to use a plugin called unsplash which is here <coughs> and these are just free images that you can use from the unsplash website and let's go with animals so I'm just going to click that and hopefully whoops I was on the top level so I just need to make sure I'm clicking on the correct item and there we go so we've got a nice deer in the woods there select the next meteor item and another animal we've got a pug jumping here we've got a nice tiger and last one we've got a buck okay so we can close that now so now we've got some really nice images uh, that's just a really helpful plugin that helps us speedily create our designs okay so just to recap we've got four rectangles called media item they are set to 428 by 428 now you can set this to whatever size you want just make sure each one's identical they are inside a auto layout with a horizontal with zero padding 
and zero space between. And also within this frame above, we've got our pagination that we created earlier, this component here. And then we've got our carousel item here, which is set to the width of 4 to 8, 4 to 8, even though the actual full width is much wider. And then we're going to apply our clip content here, like so. So this is our carousel one. So I'm just going to add a forward slash and a one. Okay, so we're doing, we're getting there. I'm just going to move this down here so we've got some space to work with it. So we now want to create a frame two or carousel two even. So I'm going to hold down Alt and drag this one below like so. So now we've got a duplicate, but we can see the number's been changed to two. And inside, we're going to grab our frame here and we're going to move it over like so. Now this has actually dragged it outside of our frame, so that's not worked very well. So the way I like to do this is just grab that frame and do minus the width. So that is minus four, whoops, minus four, two, eight, like so. Same again. Now this is where Figma is really cool. So we've already got a number in here, uh, but we can do a minus again. So you can do simple math inside here. So we can do another minus four to eight and it will instantly do. Uh, give us our total there, which is minus eight, five, six. And finally, our last carousel, carousel number four. And we're going to minus four to eight again. And there we go, we've got our last version. So we've got our carousel nearly complete. We just need to come in and update our pagination here. So let's do that two. Let's do that three. Let's do that. Four. There we go. So our pagination is now correct as well. So you might see on this one, uh, accessibility wise, this might not stand out very well on this image. So this is why you might have a dark mode version. But you know how to do that now by just following the pagination up here. As always, there'll be a link to this uh, Figma file in the description below. So you can download it and have a play around from there. If you get stuck, just have a look inside the components and you'll be able to reverse engineer it. We're now going to select all our carousel items and we are going to create a component set. So we've got our component set here. So if I was to drag this out using Alt to create a duplicate, we can then scroll through and see all our different frames, which is pretty cool. So the last thing we need to do is actually create our prototype. So here I've got a frame. So if I click the frame tool up here or press A on my keyboard, we have some defaults from here. So we're gonna work with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I'm just gonna do it inside the components here, just so we've got everything together so we can see what's being used and where. Okay, so we've brought in this iPhone 13 Pro Max frame. We're going to um, add our carousel item here to here. So I'm just going to, you can grab it from assets here, but as we're in the same page, I'm just gonna hold down Alt and drag it across and drag it in like so, just make sure it's aligned to the top and left, so it's zero and zero, and it's the full width of our frame here. So then we just wanna add some text, and we're going to make that uh, 36, and let's make it bold. Did that actually change it? No, make it 36. There we go. And bold, that works for me. Uh, probably don't need 140 pixel space uh, there. And I don't think we need that. And then we're going to create our body text below. Um, and we could probably use, again, I know I said I wouldn't use any plugins and I've, I've gone completely against that, but we are going to just quickly use a lorem ipsum plugin. So here we got to generate placeholder text, so let's run that. And that's created us a load of text there. And we wanna make that regular. I wanna make it 16. And I don't think Montserrat has the best spacing, so I'm gonna add one pixel. Uh, that didn't work. Let's try that again, 16. And one pixels. Not sure why that's doing that. Anyway, 
we can fix that shortly. So let's select these two, put it inside a frame, uh, apply auto layout to it. So I did that by pressing shift A, and then we're going to give it 16 pixels of padding top and bottom. And we're gonna give, I think 16 pixel spacing between the title and the body as well. And then we can have that fill our frame. Uh, so we'll do a fixed width here. Let's drag that in. Actually, we know that we know what the width is. It's four to eight. There we go. There we go. And then we just need to grab, give that a name, text, and then below it, just make sure both of these are set to fill the frame or the container, like so. And I just want to come back and fix this one because I'm not sure why that's done that. Let's make a size 16. Let's give it one pixel spacing. There we go. And just for readability, even though this isn't the actual paragraphs, just add some paragraphs in here. And this doesn't need to be, uh, we do fill container that way as well. There we go. Perfect. So if we were to actually come and play this, it's not going to work. And the reason is we haven't actually set up our interactions yet, but we can at least see what it looks like. So here we go. We've got our nice image, which takes a little bit to load because it's quite a big image. Uh, we've got a nice pagination there with some really nice uh, background blur on it. And then we've got our text, so our title and our body, but we can see there's no interactions. So we just need to come in and do that. <clears throat> and I'm gonna purposely do it wrong now so that we can uh, learn how not to do it because this is what I see lots of people do. So we're going to grab this and we're going to grab the top layer. We're going to press Shift E or click Prototype up here and we're going to drag it down onto this one. And I'm only going to show you how to do it wrong between these two frames so that we don't have to spend loads of time doing it between each one. I'm going to set it to on drag and we're going to set it to Smart Animate. And we're going to have it ease out over 100 milliseconds. And then we're going to do that one back the same way so that we can get back and forth. There we go. So now if we play this, we will have uh, some animation, but we can see it's not actually following my drag on the mouse. It just knows I'm dragging and then it's switching to the next frame over 100 milliseconds. And that's not what we want. We want this nice smooth animation where it actually follows the mouse. So while the mouse is down and I'm pulling, it follows the exact position that I'm moving. And back here, you can see that's not the reaction we're getting here. So let's fix that. So let's delete these interactions. And instead of starting on the top layer, we're gonna go inside our frame and find the actual frame that's visible. So on this first one, we know it's the top one. So we've selected that item. We're then gonna add the interaction from there. So on drag, we're going to change to that one. And these are all the settings I want. The second one, do the same thing. This time it's not the, this frame, it's the next media item that we wanna select. And you can tell because we can see this, these edit handles here. So we know we're on the right one. Bear in mind, you will also see that on the top level frame and this frame, or well, not this frame, just the top one, but you wanna make sure you're on the media item itself. And we're gonna do it back. So on drag, gonna change to property one, and we're gonna do an ease out. So let's, let's have a look at that one now. So now we can see that's working perfectly. So we just need to go and do it for the rest of our, um, our media items. So if we grab this one again, make sure we're selecting the media item, do on drag. I wish Figma would remember your previous settings because quite often when you're doing this, um, you're adding the same interaction between lots, lots of different things and having to come through and check on drag every time is a bit frustrating, but perhaps that's just a, an issue user case that I'm experiencing. So on this one, we're going to the third one, do on drag and we'll drag it to that one as well, do on drag. And last one, just back to the tiger, on drag. And if you wanted it to be able to go between these two as well, you can do that. So we can do uh, on drag to the last one. And we can do it back that way as 
as well and drag. No, I haven't actually tested that, so we better test that before I can say we can definitely do that. Let's have a look. So let's reload this just so we know it's definitely got our changes. And there we go. Just wait for that to snap in. There we go. That's nice. Yeah, so actually, uh, I tell a lie. I've You can't do that. Not nicely anyway. So I'm just going to remove those last two interactions that I added. And we'll just ignore that bit. And chalk that up to a learning experience. So now we've got our animations here. So last thing we need to do is just reload again. Just make sure we've got our latest updates. Now it usually does hot upload, uh, hot hot reload, sorry, but not always. So I like to just reload the tab, and then we can see we've got our nice interactions. Uh, what is interesting is in this example we have just got a frame, and in this one we've got a nice iPhone. So I think what we need to do here is just say it's a flow starting point, perhaps, and see what that looks like. Nope, that's still not got the um, iPhone around it, so could be just the title here that's the issue. Uh, not sure. But I'm going to move that out of our components page and into our design page now. So we've got it here, and let's just close our prototypes and load it again and see if it works. If not, we might have to fix it for another video. Oh no, there we go. So it's working now. So perhaps it was because it was in the same page as the components that was the issue, or perhaps it had because it had a, a hyphen one after it, I'm not sure. But either way, it seems to be working now. And that is our interactive um, carousel using Figma Smart Animate uh, completed. So I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, there's loads of ways you can expand this. We can make this scrollable as well. Um, in fact, shall we just do that now, just so we've got it? So let's just uh, grab this text, make it much bigger, and let's just duplicate it a few more times. Whoops, not like that. And just going to remove that click content real quick. There we go. This we're going to go to prototype and say vertical scrolling. And then we're going to grab our text here. Uh, not that, sorry. We're going to then grab our frame again and do click content. And I think this is all we need to do. Yeah, so there we go. Now we've got a nice scrollable vertical article. So this could make a nice blog post. And then we've got our carousel at the top that works as well. So hopefully that is a useful tutorial for you. Um, I've enjoyed making it. Um, we've covered lots of stuff here from creating the design and all the components themselves and how we can use a few different plugins, even though I said we wouldn't be using plugins, how we can use a nice few plugins just to quickly iterate our prototypes. Um, so Unsplash that was for the images and then Laura Mipsum um, exact name was generate placeholder text and unsplash with the plugins I used in this episode. So let me know in the comments below what you thought and if this video has helped you. Uh, please like and subscribe, that really helps the channel grow. Um, let you know, your friends and colleagues know about this video, hopefully it will help them too. And as always these videos are free um, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.